So, you've completed your course orientation. You'll notice that this orientation period was an extended period, approximately two weeks. And there's a reason that that period is so long. I want to ensure that you fully and thoroughly understand the critical processes that are involved in my Blackboard courses. This better understanding is an understanding of my conceptual framework and why and how our journey will proceed. Now this is really important. It's better to invest that time now as opposed to later experiencing certain problems within the Blackboard environment. Keep in mind, your Blackboard module or your Blackboard course is actually an intellectual interactive environment. It is activity-centered and highly relies on the process of reflection or more specifically personal reflection and that personal reflection facilitates your reconfiguration of your prior knowledge and skills now just a little bit more about your blackboard environment or your intellectual environment whether this is your first blackboard course or whether or not you've taken various Blackboard courses. Keep in mind that they will generally differ in subtle ways. One student recently asked me why I design my Blackboard courses as I do and how I got to the point of integrating so many interactive activities into my Blackboard courses. Well, essentially, this has been a 15-year process of scholarship and research. I was often amazed at how poorly Blackboard courses were designed. Many times, instructors would simply throw stuff into a Blackboard module and call it an online course. I was also very aware that students felt detached from reality, the reality of intellectual maturation or learning. They understood very little about the rationale for their engagement within the modules and essentially it was a process of them surveying information and being personally responsible for their own mastery and learning. Now this is not a bad thing even within my modules you are personally responsible for your mastery of learning or that intellectual reconfiguration that we speak of. The primary difference being I am a strong advocate of interaction, engagement, along with that intellectual reconfiguration. In order to do so, I firmly believe that you have to understand your environment just as if you were going to take a long road trip from Frankfort, Kentucky to Ottawa, Canada. You would map it out, you would understand what the road signs are, you would understand how that journey was going to proceed, otherwise you'd never know if you had arrived at your destination. Arriving at that destination is what we refer to as that intellectual reconfiguration. That is simply knowing what you have learned examining what you now know or can do in terms of what you previously thought you knew or could do and reconfiguring your intellectual world so that you are totally reborn into a new intellectual. As we proceed on our journey, these types of statements and expectations will become second nature to you. And before you know it, especially by the time you're in this course, you would have accepted a whole new value set one based on intellectual discovery through critical thinking, which requires you to reconfigure what you thought you knew. And it doesn't matter the subject matter or the content matter, because our examination of content is only within the context of this intellectual discovery. Therefore, it won't be necessary to argue whether or not 
that content is important because our intellectual and critical examination of that content will individually lead us to those conclusions regarding importance. Put another way, it would lead us to the establishment of value. Now, very quickly, a little bit about your Blackboard environment. When you're first in a Blackboard, again, whether or not you're an experienced user or a first-time user, you're going to notice certain redundancies. You have a Blackboard homepage and you have a course homepage. I'll spend a little time talking about the Blackboard homepage because the same things that are going to be found on the Blackboard homepage, with the exception of the listing of all of the courses that you enrolled in, will also be found in the course homepage. Generally speaking, in your upper left hand corner, you have a course menu. And some of these items are of more importance than other items. Perhaps the most critical item that students often overlook is the success alerts. Success alerts are designed to let you know and keep you abreast as to whether or not you're on pace. Much as we would follow a road map to get to Ottawa, Canada, success alerts will inform you whether or not you completed assignments in a timely manner. They will also inform you whether or not assignments are pending, overdue, or not submitted at all. These are alerts and they are designed to ensure that you stay on track in our intellectual journey. And I strongly encourage you to monitor those success alerts daily. Having said that, the first menu item you should always look at daily is announcements. Announcements are my effort to keep you informed as to where you are on the journey or to explain things that may be confusing to you. Announcements will be critical and more often than not, students who do not monitor those announcements very closely suffer the consequences of academic failure. Now you're already familiar with the discussion board link and that link is not something that you necessarily have to consistently monitor because generally the announcement will tell you that a discussion board has been posted. The most confusing link is perhaps the course documents, videos, menu item. These are not assignments that require your actions and completion. They're simply a compilation of all of the videos, documents, and other materials that we previously looked at within the course. I place them in that folder so that you'll always have immediate access to those documents. Believe it or not, the times will come when you'll wish, you'll say, oh, I recall doing this in week two or week three, but I can't access it anymore. By placing it into that folder, you always have readily access to those documents, videos, and folders. Now, let's cut to the chase, the meat of the menu item, current assignments. The current assignments link will take you immediately to those assignments that are pending, and those assignments will always be indicated with a due date. You need to exercise extreme caution in adhering and complying with those due dates because as you know, I will not repost nor will I reset assessments and other required activities or engagements of the course. Finally, here's an item that's not in the course menu, but you'll find it and many of you have already found it, the grade book. Now your grade book will give you a tally of all of your scores on every required assessment and activity. Well, be careful because many times grade book items do what I call bleeding over. Take for example, this is actually the third week of the course or somewhere around there. In week seven or eight, we will pursue activities that also have assessments aligned with them. Many times your grade book will indicate those assessments and this is what I call the bleeding over. They're already posted, they're waiting on you weeks down the road, and they may appear in your grade book. But don't get scared and certainly don't worry. No scores are in those items because we haven't gotten there yet. So be careful in your interpretation of where you are in terms of the dates that are associated with grade book items. You'll know very clearly those items that should have been completed and you'll also know those items that are immediately pending completion. And to better assist your intellectual discovery and your success, 
be sure to always compute your own grades because Blackboard is looking at everything and it calculates everything, which is a bit unfair. It also does not calculate some things which are not within the Blackboard environment. Simply remember that your grade will always be computed on the basis of possible points and the actual accumulated points. Regarding YouTube integration, you now know that you, you can view videos in YouTube, but you can't comment nor rate videos in YouTube unless you have a Google account. Your Google account is your key to everything that we'll do within the YouTube interactive environment of this course and journey. So therefore, ensure that you are logged into your Google account. And you may even select the option to stay logged in. Invariably, many students experience difficulties and frustrations with the ability to paste their comments into YouTube or to rate the videos. Well, primarily the reason that experience occurs is because the student isn't logged into their Google account. Suffice it to say that you're rating the video that is liking it or not liking it must be based on the content of the video and not the aesthetics of the video. It must be based on your ability to evaluate or evaluate the reliability, validity, and value of that content to you as an individual and whether or not it has had a personal impact on your ability to reconfigure what you thought you knew in terms of what you now know and to become a new intellectual being. And as the pretest has indicated, the failure to rate your video means that your compliance with the assignment is incomplete. All of these things will become easier as you continue on our journey, our intellectual journey. The final thing, and I promise this is the final thing, that I'd like to speak about is confusion. It is not at all unusual to become confused. As a matter of fact, confusion is good. Did you know that there are many theoretical frameworks which posit confusing students in order to increase learning? Now that sounds crazy on the face of it, but if you think about it, think about the last time you were confused. Either of two options will happen when you're confused. You'll remain confused and forget about it and give up, or you will work your way through that confusion. Working your way through that confusion is intellectual discovery. And using critical thinking skills is one really, really serious effective tool for working through confusion. So, if it appears that I am confusing you at times, it could be with the volume of work that's posted, it could be with the unclarity of the instructions of an assignment, or it could be, as I often do, my disappearance. Yeah, I will disappear. There will be times when you'll wonder, where is he? And that absence is purposely implemented in order to allow you some time to use your own individual critical thinking skills and reasoning, your deconstructive skills, and your intellectual discovery to come to conclusions and answers on your own. Neat, isn't it? I'm very much looking forward to our continued intellectual journey, and I hope you are too. Just remember, this is an infallible system. It's been designed with you in mind to ensure your intellectual maturation and to ensure that you're successful. If you follow the plan, each one of you will be. Yada, yada, yada. Sound kind of forced. Hmm? Thank you.